invoicing and recurring payments. I'm Justin Willey from PPI, and along with us, we will have Norber Hambluck. So Norber is a Treasury Real Estate Manager at Strabag, and he is also a member of the Association for Corporate Treasury in Germany. For those who do not know Strabag, Strabag is an integrated real uh, estate service provider that delivers technical and commercial services which are relevant to real estate. Among their customers, they include capital investment companies, insurers, and private investors. Norber is responsible for incoming and outgoing payments related to real estate management, electronic connection to banks, and payment implementation in SAP. Welcome, Norber. We will also have Christoph Grimberg. Christoph Grimberg is product manager for a CPA request to pay on Western Europe at Société Générale. Christoph has worked at Société Générale for more than 20 years in middle-sized corporate agency and in cash management department for large corporates. And now he specializes in request to pay for Western Europe STD and local Swiss offers. Welcome, Christoph. To present this survey, we will have Annick Moos, who is head of co uh, communication at EBA, and Thomas Egner, who is uh, secretary general at EBA. Over to you. Thanks, Jocelyn. Thanks, Jocelyn, for your kind introduction and uh, for being our moderator again today. And good morning to all of you from my side as well, also on behalf of all EBA colleagues. It's really a great pleasure to see so many of you joining us this morning for our second Request to Pay deep dive session. In October, um, as already mentioned by Jocelyn, and those of you who have attended this session will remember, we looked into the e-commerce use case. And today, we're continuing our request to pay journey, and I really use explicitly use the word journey, uh, by focusing on e-invoicing and recurring payments. So, for those of you who are not familiar with the survey as such that provided the input for today's session, let me just briefly explain you a bit of background and scope of this exercise. So, we launched this pan-European survey, and it's really pan-European, in summer 2020 with the support of PPI and closed it in February this year. So it was almost three quarters of a year um, when the survey ran. And it was carried out based on the proposal of an expert group, expert group of bankers uh, of EBA member banks. And the objective of the survey was indeed to gather insights into the request to pay solutions and features that businesses, so the demand side, ask for and to better understand the pain points they would like to be addressed by the supply side, i.e. the banks or the providers. <clears throat> but at the same time, and this was a real huge background motivation for us to, to run this survey, we also wanted to start a dialogue within the ecosystem, so within all players of the financial value chain, payments value chain on how to put expectations around requests to pay really into practice. So today's session is really aimed at combining both objectives. First, my colleague Anik and myself, we will share with you the survey insights on e-invoicing and recurring payments. And then we will back, we will hand back to Jocelyn to moderate, as already indicated, a dialogue between Norbert and Christoph, a corporate treasurer and a bank representative. And I'm really convinced that the current format will provide you with valuable food for thought in determining your priorities and also preparing for the development of request for pay solutions. And at the same time, I hope that we can engage in a broader and also a deeper expert exchange with a wide range of players around the table, again in a physical event in 2022. So, I'm I'm sorry. I have my my screen frozen. So yeah, it's it's continuous. Sorry. I'm now seeing the right the right slide now. Super. Um, those of you who have attended our previous session on this on this survey, 
um, um, you might you might remember um, that the survey indeed covered four use cases in total, which has been identified by our expert group. Number one is the point of sale or point of interaction, POS or POI. Second is the online commerce. Third, e-invoicing. And fourth, recurring payments. And as mentioned earlier, we already covered e-commerce in our session on 20th of October. And we have requests to pay at the point of sale or point of interaction on our list for the next deep dive session, which hopefully will then take place at the beginning of next year. So for today's session, we decided to bundle e invoicing and recurring payments together. Why? Well, simply because they have the same type of invoicing and reconciliation processes at their core. And we've also included recurring payments as a dedicated use case in the survey, simply because it was felt that it may particularly benefit from some of the opportunities offered by request to pay. And honestly, recurring payments is only a specific form to cope with invoicing scenarios. And interestingly enough, we really seem to have struck a short there because recurring payments ended up attracting the highest number of respondents of all four use cases. So without further ado, let's zoom in on the specifics now. And by the way, if I had not mentioned it yet, if you would like to raise any questions or comments at any time during the presentation, please use the chat function provided in MS Teams. OK, so let's directly start uh, with the with the content and Anik. Um, participants who have attended our October session might wonder what happened to our introduction on the demographics of the respondents well contributed uh, to these findings. Where have they gone? Well, uh, Thomas, the answer is very simple. Uh, we have findings on two use cases that we would like to share with you in the next 15 minutes uh, to really leave enough time for our, our practitioners to discuss. And we really did not want to spend a third of this time walking the audience through two sets of demographics. So um, if, if, if you would like to know more um, about the corporate front runners that were eager to provide impact on an ecosystem that is not yet even in the market in a pan European fashion. Uh, please just turn to the annex of this slide set because we have included all the demographic in uh, in that part uh, and we've circulated that to all registered participants before the session uh, but you can also find uh, the, the slides on the EBA website and I think we were, we're also planning to put the link into the chat function if, if that hasn't done yet it hasn't been done yet um, what we can see on this particular slide here is an illustration of the relevance of request to pay for the e-invoicing uh, use case. Uh, since you all know this, the scheme by the EPC is pan-European by nature, and so we were especially interested in measuring the, its attraction for the 59% of our respondents whose organizations regularly send invoices across European borders. And as you can gather from the graph on the right, uh, over 70% of our respondents have an interest in using requests to pay as part of their invoicing process. Uh, so if you add those that are only somewhat interested, uh, this figure even goes up to, to over 90%. So a, a, a clearly very compelling uh, use case for request to pay. It was only uh, beat by a very, very uh, um, uh, small margin uh, by the e-commerce uh, use case, which was the reason also why we took the use cases in the order uh, and, and, and went for, for, for this as a second session. A compelling use case, I think that's a that's a good start into the discussion. But we also asked about potentially missing success factors to make all uh, this this happen. So, what did what did our respondents reply here? Uh, yes, we did get a lot of uh, of free text uh, input uh, on uh, on missing success factors uh, for especially as you can see here uh, recurring payments. Um, on the far right, you see the more fundamental 
missing success factors, those that, those that were actually mentioned for all use cases in, 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 in the same fashion. And uh, I think we will hear uh, about those, but also about the more specific ones, uh, certainly a lot more in the discussion uh, from Norbert Hambloch. Um, but you can see then on the left, the specific uh, input that was provided on e-invoicing first, and then also recurring payments. Um, for e-invoicing, the respondents placed a strong focus on payers benefits. Uh, they mentioned uh, data transparency and security, uh, but also uh, more specifically banking apps supporting access to external invoices, uh, for example, by way of a storage facility. Uh, but they also asked for alignment with existing um, e-invoicing standards and, and, and norms. You know, there's one uh, mentioned here in particular, um, and, and the ongoing harmonization efforts at, at process and solution level uh, in general. Um, for recurring payments, on the other hand, the requirements were a bit more granular and they were mostly geared at maximizing automation capabilities. Um, uh, one example was, is the call for a fallback mechanism or retry in case the funds are not present on the payer's account. Um, but I could also mention here the possibility uh, for payers to automatically accept a request to pay if the amount stays under a certain threshold. Um, but as this example shows, transparency for the player, uh, for the payer, sorry, played a prominent role also in some of the requirements, uh, as did security. Uh, some of the respondents actually suggested uh, that the payee's PSP should be liable uh, if their payee were to execute any malicious actions. Uh, so, you know, a lot of focus already uh, on the payer and the payer experience, uh, especially on the recurring payments uh, side, I would say. That's already great, great insight, Anik. Um, turning now to the next slide, which uh, if you look at the slide, it seems a bit crowded, if not overcrowded, but it provides a nice comparison of all the benefits that our respondents attributed to these two new use cases and also come up with a very nice and, and valuable insight. Um, Anik, any comments on this slide? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, of course, first for the for the crowded character here, but we really wanted to bring out the, the comparison and basically also show that things aren't all that different. I mean, uh, you know, given that we really only had the front runners in the survey, this, is, this isn't a survey that was filled in by, 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 by thousands of respondents. After all, uh, you know, one should probably not not uh, interpret too much uh, into into the, 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 the individual differences by, you know, 5% margin or so. Um, so what we basically see is that both use cases score highly on, on topics such as end-to-end -end digitalization, on convenience, and by convenience we really mean both for the payee and the payer. And in general, the scores show a strong support for the benefits we listed. Those were benefits that we proposed to the respondents, and they generally agreed uh, with most of them. I mean, we, we, we basically have a 70 to 80 percent uh, uh, agreement rate uh, for most of them. Um, uh, and, and that was the case also for e-commerce. It was a bit less the case for, for, for point of sale and interaction, uh, maybe just to mention that uh, by comparison. Uh, there, the support of the individual benefits that we had suggested reached uh, usually just 60-something percent for most of the benefits. Um, the only one that we can see kind of fall off a little bit uh, compared uh, to, uh, to, 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 to the others is really the, the protection against, uh, against fraud, which, you know, scores or has the lowest score both for recurring payments and for e-invoicing. Um, and uh, it's probably really a topic to be followed up on to understand whether there are any particular concerns or whether maybe there needs to be more awareness uh, to be brought uh, to the market also on uh, the, the especially compelling uh, advantages that that request to pay is is seen by many experts to have in that space. Um, at the same time, if we turn now to the additional benefits listed on the right, uh, these demonstrate that our respondents see a great potential for requests to pay in remedying many of the pain points they have. And here, uh, what stands out tremendously is really direct debits. Um, so they mentioned avoiding cumbersome mandate handling, uh, the, the, the following up on unhappy direct debit flows is there. Uh, they are also really concerned about, uh, you know, late 
unwinding processes, uh, you know, insolvencies that that strike uh, a payer uh, months later, and where you know then uh, the insolvency. Um, uh, 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 people in charge of the re insolvency uh, try to really claw back uh, some of the some of the direct debit uh, flows. Uh, so that seems to be really a strong concern, and especially, of course, in in the recurring payment space, uh, where you 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 quickly get uh, come to 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 vast accumulation of uh, of amounts if there are, for instance, uh, monthly rent payments involved. So. Yeah, th thanks, thanks, Anik, and thanks also for for taking away the complexity of this of this slide, very well explained. And I must say personally, uh, unhappy direct debit flows. This is a word or an expression I've learned explicitly um, when discussing all these uh, different use cases here. Um, but it's it's true. Uh, if I, I can really understand um, that that potentially you might result in in an unhappy. Uh, a payment flow uh, provided and given all uh, potential um, challenges you just have described. So, but before we now turn to our speakers uh, and learn more about uh, the opportunities and re the requirements to see for this specific request to pay case, um, let's perhaps share a few more insights um, on the specific um, uh, modalities of invoicing or recurring payments uh, that we have asked our respondents to evaluate. Yeah, that's a good idea, Thomas. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, jump into that. Uh, so on slide 10, uh, we've brought uh, with us uh, the overview um, of the transportation of invoicing data. And we, and we see uh, a tremendous support actually for the idea to have requests to pay help with the transportation of either key invoicing data or in some way or fashion the invoice itself to the payer. And uh, one, one example that, that, that we gave here, um, just to also make it a bit more tangible, was, for instance, through a link included in the request. Uh, so there's clearly uh, already among those that are more strongly interested in this, uh, 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 quite some interest. Uh, if you include those that are somewhat interested, uh, you know, you land uh, uh, somewhere around 90%. And uh, that that is really, I think, a clear picture and also a, a strong gap uh, that was perceived that uh, today the invoice often just, uh, you know, travels uh, uh, deep, independently uh, of the of, of the payment or of the of the, the payment process. Uh, and that uh, causes a lot of reconciliations and and and, and remittance data uh, issues. Um. If we then turn to the to the next topic um, on slide 11, uh, uh, it, that one hits home with, with many corporate treasurers um, who are looking for a way to simplify the approval process for recurring payments specifically. So here we see that 85 of our respondents supported the idea that it should be possible for the payer to give a once for all approval for a certain number of recurring invoices. And that could be subject, of course, to predefined conditions uh, such as an identical amount. Uh, so there's really a, a, a strong impulse, a strong wish uh, to, to, to simplify and streamline processes here, while at the same time giving the control and the transparency to the, to the payer. Uh, I, I think that, that uh, balance is, is, is certainly something uh, that, that, that our corporate re respondents were very much aware of can be struck with request to pay uh, as opposed to other payment instruments. Okay, um, we'll come back uh, to the to the to the chat in a, in a, in a, in a second. I just saw that we have already some interesting uh, questions popping up there, uh, which Thomas, I think we should spend a bit of time with. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so let me just quickly uh, share with you the the other insights on the slides. Um, so on 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 slide twelve, that's that's a very easy one to take in. Uh, Eighty-seven percent. Um, Showed, showed major support uh, for the provision of a bulk functionality uh, for the submission of requests to pay messages uh, from the payee uh, to the provider. Uh, so that is, um, uh, you know, a clear indication of a, of a functionality they would like to see. Um, and then uh, a bit uh, more complex in nature again, because subject to certain conditions in and, and use cases. Um, but nevertheless, a surprisingly large support uh, for the possibility here uh, on slide uh, 13 for the payer to change the amount 
of the request to pay. Um, it is, of course, much less surprising that this attracted a higher score at the level of recurring payments, uh, because there is, of course, a wider range of use cases or situations uh, in recurring payments uh, where it would make a lot of sense to provide this type of flexibility. Um, there wasn't unanimous agreement, though, on the question. Um, uh, so we, we we did have also uh, uh, quite some uh, some respondents who said, well, you know, they actually wouldn't like to see any parameter changes uh, at all uh, because it basically uh, triggers an exception handling process and and hampers reconciliation and you know there should be a new invoice rather issued in this case. Uh, so it wasn't it wasn't an, an outright clear. Uh, uh, situation, uh, the, the, the responses that we got uh, from corporates on this this topic. When we asked them, though, which other invoice paramet parameters, sorry, should be subject to modification, um, uh, the, the the one that really uh, uh, ended in the in the in the in the pole position here by far uh, was the possibility to change the the due date or payment execution date. Um, there were uh, then isolated other topics mentioned, but uh, far less uh, common. Um, and that was here the remittance information uh, or references. Uh, for instance, the example was given that one could include maybe a comment in case of an amount change. Um, uh, we also had uh, uh, people say, well, it would be practical if the payer were in a situation to actually indicate a different uh, account number or a specific account number if, in case they have several payment accounts uh, that they might have had dealing uh, with a given payee. Um, and then last but not least, um, the payment instrument uh, was also mentioned as, as something that uh, a payer should be able to, to either modify or, or, or freely choose. Uh, so that's, uh, in a nutshell, uh, the overview and the findings and figures from our survey on these specific use cases that we wanted to, to, to highlight here in this session. There's obviously a lot more uh, to find also more comparisons on the specific use cases, you know, uh, across the different use cases in the survey. Uh, so please don't, don't uh, miss to take a look at the, at the report if you haven't done so yet. Yeah. Yeah. Super, thanks, thanks, Annick. Um, and as you already mentioned, there's uh, already discussion going on in the in the chat. I think it started at the slide when when we have presented uh, the the free text format answers uh, of our uh, survey respondents, and uh, the discussion we're having in the chat um, is uh, around security. Um, um, should we should we answer that now, Anik? Should we leave it to our uh, to, to 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 our panelists to discuss that? Um, is there anything we could add uh, value uh, taken from our survey to this? I see um, uh, uh, quite a, a, a nice discussion, as I said, um, around um, around a request to pay a potential link or non-link uh, to PSD two. Uh, there's a, a point made. Um, that uh, secure authentication applies to PSD2, but a request to pay for sure uh, is, is not a payment scheme. Um, so there's quite a, a discussion ongoing. Should we, should we leave a word on that uh, before handing over or should we leave it to the, uh, to the, uh, to the panelists? Mm. I'd certainly like to just say uh, one thing about secure authentication now that was actually mentioned, um, but uh, what we didn't bring uh, to the session today uh, due to, to time pressure and because we really wanted to give as much space as possible uh, to our demand and, and, and supply side actors here um, is really the more generic uh, slides where um, uh, respondents gave a lot of feedback on uh, you know, the specific value added services they would like to see delivered but that wasn't specifically by use case uh, and so we presented some of these slides already in the october session um, they also uh, gave us uh, um, input as to which value added services they see of benefit for their payers and you know in that area of course with invoicing and recurring payments you see a, a, a lot of 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 clearly expected uh, um, uh, features such as payment by installments or or really also a lot of instruments that, that would help payers uh, with better managing their personal finance.
finances uh, via also the payment account. Um, and so if, if you want to, to learn more about uh, those aspects, uh, really do dig into, into the report. Uh, for today, we've really brought to the table more the specific findings on, on, on these two use cases. Super. Thanks, Anik. With that, uh, Jocelyn, um, over to you. If you could just lead us now through the uh, uh, discussion between uh, uh, Norbert and, and, and Christoph. Very eager to hear from them what they think about this specific use case. But uh, to our audience, uh, please, please do not hesitate to again use the chat in case you have any questions. And of course, we will be happy uh, to follow up on them during our discussion. Jocelyn, over to you. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, before we kick off the discussion, I wanted to, um, to, to, to turn to you, Norbert, and to ask you if you had a, one statement to say about request to pay, what would it be? Yeah, I have a statement about the impact or the success. And my statement is that it will be only a success if all customers in Europe are reachable. And this may require regulatory action. Why? Now we have the experience made by instant payments. There are always a risk about 15% that the payment will not be executed because the payer's bank is not reachable. And if we do request to pay in a mass transaction by a bulk, we send 40,000 invoices to uh, our customers or tenants. Then 10% uh, or 15% of them rejected will cause much more uh, work uh, inefficiency. So it's not uh, a usable instrument for us. That's one of the key findings uh, across these other um, things like convenience or whatever. But if it isn't a European um, ecosystem, I, I will use this word again, it should be an ecosystem, every bank should be reachable. It's not about that this product should be uh, offered by every bank, but any, any bank should be reachable so that we can reach all of our customers. That's one of the key points that I have and that also other companies mentioned to us in our sessions with uh, German Treasury Association, um, because we provide this information, this slides also to interested uh, corporates in Germany. And the answers are always, it should be a European, pan-European system, and that would deliver much more um, efforts or benefits for the companies. But we can discuss this later. Thank you, Norbert. Christoph, what will be your statement if you had one to say to us? Yes, uh, thank you, Jocelyn. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, for us, SATP is a great opportunity to streamline the bill management process for uh, our creditors' client and the payers' clients. On the creditor side, it could facilitate reconciliation and more generally reduce the cost of uh, treatment of invoices. And on payer side, it could simplify payment while maintaining control over sending funds. And um, uh, I, I can't um, uh, have more information about what uh, Norber was talking about. And uh, when we are talking uh, about SEPA request to pay, uh, it is uh, for us important to precisely define the community, um, the precise use case, for example, B2B invoice, uh, the customer segmentation, is it a small, a middle, or a large corporate? Because the need might be different from uh, the, their different point of views. And the better way to address the use case, is it SEPA request to pay, of course, or PSD2 APAs, why not? Uh, and uh, the, the case could be different. Thank you, Christoph, for, uh, for this. Uh insight. Uh, perhaps you wanted to make a kind of dif difference uh, between invoicing and uh, 
invoice payment. Do you want to share it with us? Um, uh, the, the difference between uh, invoicing and um, um, and uh, invoice payment, yes, uh, I think um, um, uh, invoicing solutions uh, mean that the RCTP must transmit the invoice and uh, invoice data or both. Uh, large corporates are already equipped with invoicing solutions, so uh, they could uh, be interested in new way to get paid for their bills, especially when the creditors uh, is a large corporate or a pay, um, and the payer a small or middle-sized corporate. Small or middle-sized businesses might need of an invoice solution or web banking service to manage the digital invoice or the RCTP. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal, for bringing this, um, uh, this to, to us. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you are talking to people who are fully integrated. So I will ask the question to you, Norber, first. Uh, what will be your, I will say, um, your your vision about uh, the way to include uh, request to pay in this world, um, which is already um, fully equipped and with process processes which work today already? Uh, um, for us, it's very easy because most of our tenants, we are sending invoices, are small businesses or private tenants not commercial, so it's private people and they are not able to receive electronic invoices now. So for us, it's a big opportunity to send all these invoices electronically and they can pay and they can pay with the right um, 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 reconciliation for the, the, the right reference that's needed for the reconciliation. So we have a big, big benefit in efficiency in our process. The convenience for the payer is much bigger than now because they have an easy way to put the reference into the bank transfer. It doesn't matter whether it's instant payment or DCT, um, but they have no transfer problem with uh, certain numbers, whatever. And for us, the convenience in reconciliation, because we get the right reference for the reconciliation, that's the point we are focusing on. Okay, very interesting. Thank you. What What, what do you think, um, uh, Christoph, about that? Do you have anything to add for people who are, you have mentioned those who are equipped? And what about the other one? Yes, on the, the reconciliation matter, for better reconciliation, we have to be sure that the reference of the SEPA request to pay will be handled from one end of the process to the other. Uh, it means from the, the, the SEPA request to pay filled in by the creditor uh, to the reference of the SCT or the instant payment uh, on the account statement of the creditor. So, and uh, to, to better understand the link between the SEPA request to pay and the payment is on the ends of the payers uh, service provider. Okay, thank you. Um, so you are mentioning um, the link uh, between the messaging, the request to pay and the payment. For both of you, it's obvious that we need to link both. Is that correct? Yes, of course, indeed. What about you, Norbert? Yes, that's the point. Okay, yes. And so when we talk about the payment, so we you are thinking about um, the SEPA request to pay, the, the, the SEPA request to pay and the instant payment. And uh, to what extent you see that it's uh, interesting to combine both? Um, in certain uh, situations, it's uh, instant payment. But for us, it's not necessarily the instant payment. It could be also the normal CCT because they have time for about uh, four weeks or six weeks to pay. So there is no need for the instant payment. But in certain situations or with other, but as other companies, they have a need for instant payment with the request to pay. Uh, utilities uh, like this, we talk to them because they stop the delivery of water or electricity or gas 
uh, until the debtor has paid. And for them, it's necessarily with an instant payment so that they can um, switch on this, this utility again. But for us, it's not a necessary uh, feature. Okay. So there are many uh, questions about uh, the certainty of payment. And uh, with this combining the request to pay and instant payment, we see the difference uh, for, from the, the certainty point of view with uh, the SDD. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, um, especially with recurring payments, it's a, a big point about the certainty of payments because uh, we have now the problem that the direct debit is revocable. Eight weeks legal, but in case of insolvency, it could be 13 months. And that's a problem for our commercial tenants. We cannot offer uh, direct debit to commercial tenants. So for us, it would solve a problem. We can offer them a request to pay with recurring payments for a year, 12 times because the rent is uh, different from each year to each other because of uh, uh, higher prices, whatever. And so we can offer them that's a convenience. And they need also an invoice. Commercial tenants need always also an invoice about the, the, the rent. So we can put them together. Uh, recurring payments, including an e-invoicing, would solve more problems and the convenience on both sides. I think they they will um, accept this. And for us, it's the reconciliation again. So it's it's not a certain point. You should put all these benefits together, and then you have an ecosystem, and then you have much more benefits when you put them together. And you have to think about it. What's your case? Uh, it, to use it, and then you can put the benefits from the key findings, and then you can say, oh, that's wonderful for us. Or we have a different type of um, business. We have um, other key, uh, other points of benefits for us. So it's not uh, that everybody should use the same type of request to pay, but the combination. Yeah, and um, when we talk about to other treasurers in Germany, they say, oh, that's wonderful, and they bring up new ideas. So we can talk uh, later about uh, an idea for treasury, for um, liquidity management. Yeah, um, we didn't think about this when we made this um, 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 points of the um, for the um, for the slides, but um, with the discussion, we can understand more of the benefits they could be uh, fire found when we in, when we are engaging other discussion discussion or uh, members uh, in, in 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 the future. Thank you, Norbert. Christophe, do you have anything to add about that? Yes, thank you, Jocelyne. Uh, <clears throat> to my point of view, yes, the 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 the, the SEPA request to pay, um, we generate uh, SCT or instant payment is better for the corporates, is better for the bank because uh, with SDD uh, we have a risk issues for us. Um, but it's different for a consumer. Uh, on the consumer point of view, um, it, it might lose the possibility to request a refund uh, for eight weeks. So it's um, we have to. Uh, I think the point is uh, um, uh, in the dialogue between the corporate and its client. Um, uh, it's different than in e-commerce use case because in e-commerce use case it's the client that choice the mean of payment 
and on this use case B2B invoice, it's more the, 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 the corporates that uh, sent the request to pay to the payer. Um, but uh, I think the capons is the dialogue between um, the, 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 the corporate and its client and uh, the, the fact that the power request to pay um, uh, could make a better client journey for the customer uh, at all. I can add something. You said for the uh, customer, it's not as comfortable as direct debit. That's right, because if there is something wrong in a, in a, in a flat, because uh, the, the electricity is missing or whatever, they will stop the direct debit. So that's, a, that's not efficient. It's much more work. But with a request to pay, and then the feature, you can change the amount. You can reduce the amount in case of a failure or whatever. And that's convenient for both because I know already when I receive less money than in the request to pay, there is something going wrong and I can react. And it's not the revoke of a direct debit with much more work at the other side in the bookkeeping and in the accounting and all of these things. So that's one of the benefits, changing the amount. And this, you could say, is the opposite of the revoke of a direct debit. Thank you, Norbert. Anik, you wanted to add something? Yeah, I basically just wanted to bring in here a point from the chat because I thought that was a very pertinent question, uh, given that we're just discussing the benefits or, or, or lack of, of requests to pay for payers. Uh, uh, Novak, do you think that corporates would be ready to reward private customers to use requests to pay? And, and, and in which form could that be done? I think you have to offer it firstly because it's not known because it's not known with, at any at, at all companies. So it's a close discussion now between a few hundred corporates and banks. It's not with all companies, so it will take time. And you have, when it's known, you can offer it in the first time, but then it will be regularly used when, it, when you have a little bit experience, one or two years. So it will take time. It's not from now and immediately you can use it. So you have to prepare it. You have to inform your customers. Yeah? Especially for our commercial customers, we will offer it to them. And when they see they have a, con a benefit from the convenience, that's our point. We can offer it and we should tell them what's the benefits for them. And then it will be a success. And we see the benefits for the, for the customers, uh, even commercial or private. And that's the point. And we should bring the focus to the benefits. So, so you would rather see that there's an educational exercise that needs to be done first rather yes. than, than, than starting off with incentives because you feel that request to pay would hold enough benefits for them if it's yes. underst un understood and used the right way. I think yes. Mm. Christoph, would you agree with that? Yes, I agree, and I think um, uh, for uh, for the banks, uh, the, the benefit that uh, we could provide to a consumer to a, a private is security. Yeah, I agree with this because when you receive an invoice by a bank account, you are you are sure that the sender of this invoice has also done the KYC process and everything. So you know where's the sender of this invoice. When you receive e um, invoices by email, you are never sure that this is a real invoice. Yeah, it's a simple card. Yeah, and that's one of the points uh, we should also bring as a benefit that you are sure the invoice is real and the sender is known because it's coming from the bank and the sender cannot use this instrument without KYC and everything what's necessary. 
That's a big point. We didn't mention it before. Honey, do you want to add more questions from the the chat? Yeah, I'm a bit struggling with uh, with seeing a, a, a trend here. There, there clearly is a lot of discussion in the chat still. Uh, if I get it right, on the on the on the link between the request to pay, and 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 the payment and how that could be substantiated. Um, um, so that 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 remains a, a a strong topic here. Um, I don't know. We, we've already uh, brushed upon it in in one way or the other, but I don't know whether whether uh, that's something to be to be delved into more. So, if you don't have more question, uh, I will probably ask uh, to our panelist, starting by you, Norber. Do you have some, I will say, some specific um, requirements that are important for you in this um, implementation from your point of view? Um, yes. The, the reference from the request to pay and the invoice reference would be different, but the need for reconciliation, the invoice reference or whatever. But it should be a reference transported from us to the customer and back again. So then it's easy for reconciliation. That's one of the points. And that's what 100% uh, of the corporates we talked to said also. There should be a reference so that the reconciliation is very easy. Thank you. Christoph, do you want to add something on, on that? Yes, thank you, Jocelyn. Uh, it's, uh, I, I already, uh, I already um, talked about this SEPA request to pay is a, um, a, a very large scheme with um, a, 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 an important number of use cases. Uh, it depends on the community, of the precise use case, on the customer segmentation. And uh, it would be great if the work talking place at the EPC to further develop the scheme could mention the market uh, monitoring of community prioritization and delivery efforts. Thank you for this. And eventually I wanted to ask you a question about uh, specific, I will say, use cases that you, you, you have in mind. Um, yeah, for us, it's uh, very interesting that we find also few new news ca use cases in the discussion with other treasurers. Uh, we never thought about that request to pay could be also an instrument for liquidity management for treasurer. But uh, after discussion with uh, a retailer, we Find out, we found out that you can put some additional um, features on it, like buy now, pay later, or buy now, pay in two or three installments. And then you have a problem with the guarantee of the payer's bank. So, but it, therefore they say, oh, that's wonderful, we can manage our liquidity. So instead of getting all the liquidity in the month before Christmas, because it's a retailer for uh, most of the Christmas gifts, and uh, he, can, he said, oh, he can offer them. And that's an additional feature the bank could offer, and the bank could put the guarantee, whatever. But we have to discuss this, and thinking about in this community and get all the information together that will bring a real ecosystem to work for Twitter. Thank you, Norbert, for your point. Christoph? Uh, yes, Jocelyn, um, uh, APC is uh, working on uh, instatement payment or recurring payment. 
Um, I think uh, there are two different things, and the difference is uh, mainly legal. Uh, it concerns the agreement between the client and uh, its supplier. Uh, for a better uh, comprehension of the difference, uh, it's um, easy to, to, to have examples. Uh, payment uh, in installment, uh, for example, for a trip, and uh, we're creating payment for the payment of an insurance contribution over 10 months, for example. And, uh, you know, we're creating an installment payment uh, are already possible with the, the, the second version of the rule book, uh, but the creditor must send uh, a CRTP, a SEPA request to pay for each maturity uh, with uh, uh, an issue in terms of uh, reconciliation. Uh, the, the, the ref there's a possibility that the reference uh, uh, must not be the same for each SEPA request to pay. So, uh, in the third version of the rule book, uh, mm. this point will be covered, mm. and um, the, the, the third version of the rule book uh, will be released on uh, November 2022. Thank you very much, Christophe, for this, uh, this insight. Um, Ali, do you want to add more questions? Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, maybe to give you a choice here, uh, we had uh, Cosimo Rulo uh, asking Norbert Hamloch, uh, what value do you expect should have a request to pay confirmation? So the, 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 the acceptance, so to speak, of a request to pay, should it be a guarantee, a promise of a payment, or what else? Um, uh, I'm clear. I didn't think about this. <laughs> and that's one of the points we have to discuss. It's very early in this uh, discussion. And that's one of the points we have to discuss to define. And that uh, should be defi defined before the system is starting. Yeah. It could be different. I don't know. Yeah, it could be different by use yes. case, I guess, which yes. which I think yes. adds to the complexity indeed. Um, OK, so a, a very clear answer to that. Um, um, then we have uh, here the question, I think that is maybe, I hope, a bit easier to answer. Is there a way to secure that unsolicited request to pay messages are screened or stopped? For instance, if a fraudulent actor uses mobile numbers to send requests to pay messages. Um, I don't know, that is maybe something that Christophe you would be willing to to take because I guess it depends a bit on the on 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 the selection process uh, that that service providers have in place, but also of course on the homologation process for service providers themselves. Uh, so whether you're allowed under the scheme to yes, send out you. messages, right? Yes, thank you, Anik. Uh, yes, security is a uh, very and fraud is a, a very important matter for us, and that's why we are thinking about uh, uh, an access an, uh, on uh, 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 web banking uh, to accept or refuse SIPA request to pay, and uh, uh, banks are uh, very uh, uh, focused on the fraud and security, and uh, we will. Uh, um, um, manage it very carefully and uh, our aim is to uh, create a very secure environment for our clients. Is that clear or do you, do you need more, <laughs> more details on that? It is uh, certainly clear to, to to me. We also have here the the answer indeed from from Andreas Schneider also in the chat who said only secured payees can be homologated by the homologation uh, body acting on behalf of the EPC. Frauds mm -hmm. are not welcome. So uh, there are certainly processes being put in place uh, both at the level of the of the EPC and then there is as 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 Norbert mentioned earlier, of course, also the you know the KYC to be done by. Uh, by every uh, individual provider uh, towards their, the payees they, that they they offer this instrument to, I guess. Um, I, I, I hope we've covered uh, the, 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 the large lines, the big questions that came out of the, the chat. If not, please 
do not hesitate to also, you know, just just reiterate the point or send us an email after the session, and we'll be happy to to try and follow up on that. So, Jocelyn, it would I think be back to you. Perfect. So um, I think it was quite interesting to have this uh, discussion, and uh, uh, I will I have um, written some key takeaways from from this discussion. Um, of course. What I understand is that the combination between request to pay and payment is very important. It's very key. Uh, then the second, the necessity to encourage uh, the 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 uh, the users so that they can adopt. Uh, so education will be key. Security will be key too. And to think of um, of an integrated ecosystems because some people are have ERPs, other will not have it, as you have mentioned, Norbert. So I think, um, yes, thank you. Thank you all for this uh, very thoughtful discussion. And uh, I know that, um, Anik, you have uh, already sent the link to be able to download the full report. I thank you all for your, your participation. I thank uh, Norbert and uh, Christoph for, for your answers. And uh, we look forward to welcoming for the next session. Thank you. Thank you, Nobu.